In this video we are going to take a look at our first categorical structure that will help us create a model for software. We will be doing a small code example, so let's dive into the code. So in this example we have a small function that squares a number and logs its output to the console. Let's just run it for a moment to see what it does. So as you can see it logs its output that is squaring the number 5 after we call square with the number 5. So it logs its message to the logger variable and then at the end we log that to the console. Now we would like to make this function that has side effects a pure function. So what we will do is create make that logging part of the output. So we will make a pair here with the result and the logger. So now this no longer returns a number, but something that we will call a writer. And it is a writer of the type number. So let's first make that writer. We can make that using an interface. Writer is a, the writer is a generic type because we want to return any kind of data while also logging something. So we use the generic type in TypeScript here. So the result is our if, so the result is of type A, which is our generic type, and then we have a logger of type string. So now you can see that the errors are cleared up. Now of course this is not a pure function yet because it depends here on the logger that is a global variable and it also changes it. So what we can do instead is add this logger to the input arguments. So now we of course here have to pass in the logger. So that will just be an empty string because this is the first part. And then we don't no longer need this logger variable. And instead the log is returned here. So the result is the square number. And then we have the logger. So and if we run this, the result is exactly the same. But there is a weird thing going on here, because we are accepting the logger as an argument of the function. But there is a weird thing going on here, because now our square function, which takes the logger as its input argument, is responsible for both concatenating the log together and also for squaring, for squaring the number, which is its actual goal. So this function now has two responsibilities and of course we want our functions to only do one thing. So what we will do instead is remove this logger, uh, uh, logger input argument and instead just return this value. So now we no longer need this here and the logger is just an output argument. Now this works fine with just one function, it is exactly the same. But we need to do the log concatenation, so if we have multiple calls, we need to put those logs together outside of this function. So let's make another function that also uses the log. So what we would like to do now is first run our function square and then run the function add one on the result of that square. So we are computing the square plus one of a number. If these were normal functions, just from a number to a number, so without our logging output, then we could just do add one of square of our number. But as you can see, this is now an error because square returns a writer of number and add one expects just a number without that logging. So we can't just use normal function composition. What we will instead have to do is use what we have already done here and pass only the square part to add one. So what we now have is then add one and another logger is the result of add one of that square. So I'll just rename this to logger one. And now we need to concatenate our loggers together to get the full log. So the full log is then L1 plus L2. So now we have composed our two functions. Let's see and run it. 
and can see that the logs are output correctly. It first squares the number 5 and then adds 1 to 25. So, can we make this more generic? We already created a very generic writer interface to contain our logging functions. Can we create composition for any two of these, to any two functions that return a writer output? And we can, we can adapt this. Let's first make this a function that also takes an argument and returns the composed functions. So let's make it a function called process, which takes a number and logs and outputs a number. So here we are calling first square with now our number x, which is the input. Then we do add one, and now we have to return a writer with the result that is the call to the last function, and a logger that is the concatenation of both logging outputs. That should be a, oh, not a zero. So now we have a function process and we can of course check that it works. Create a logger from process the number six. Let's try that one. So now we have abstracted this into a function. Can we make this a generic function that composes any two such functions that take just an argument and then returns a writer of some type and another function that takes in like the value in this writer, but doesn't care about logs further. So let's try to do that. I will call this function kcompose, and it will have three generic types, a, b, and c. So its first argument is a function f, that takes an argument of type a, and returns a writer of b, and we have Another argument that is the function g, which takes an argument of type b. So this is the output of the function f that will be passed to g. And g itself returns a writer of c. And this composition function should then return a function that goes from, takes the argument of a, passes that to f, passes the result of f to g, and then gives back the result with the concatenated logs, so the output is a writer of C. Okay, let's create this function. First, we start with return, because we want to return a function, and we can directly do that with an x of type a as its argument, and then the function body. So here we now have to do that function composition that we already did in our process function. So we can just say const uh, the result of here is the first result and the logger is the first logger. And that is the result of running f on our argument. Then we have the second function call, which creates the second result and the second logger, which is the result of calling g on the result of that first function. And now we can compose that into our new writer that we return. So we return the result is the result of the function called to g. So that's r2. And the logger is the, com is the combination of the first log and the second log. So now we have a generic composition function for two functions that take some argument and return a writer type. So now we can rewrite our process using this kcomposition function. So instead what we can do is say process, oh, process is kcompose, first run the square function and then run the add one function. So now let's run it again and the result is still coming out fine. So we now have defined a custom composition function that takes two functions that go from some value to a writer of some type. Now if you remember from the previous video, 
We saw that if we can define composition, chances are that we are working with a category. But there is one more requirement, and that is that there is also an identity arrow in that category. So let's see if we can define that one. So in this category, all functions between types A and B are functions of type A to writer B. So our identity function should go from A to writer A. Because it is the identity function, we of course don't want the result value to change. So we just pass that in. And if it is the identity, we don't want the logger to change really when we compose this with another function. If we want to first run identity and then run some other function and we compose those using kcompose, we want the result to be the same as just running that one function. So it shouldn't lock anything to the output. So this is just an empty string. So now we have defined composition and identity. You can check that the rules for composition that we defined in the previous video, so associativity and identity, do indeed hold for these two. This means that we now have defined a category. This is called the Kleisley category. And in the Kleisley category, if there are two objects A and B, and there is a function between these two objects, then that function has a type of A to the Kleisley container of B. So in our case, it is A to the writer of B. So all functions inside this Kleisley category return something that is kind of wrapped inside this container with extra information. In our case, that is the writer interface that also contains logging output. So this is the first structure of category theory that we can apply in our real code to get a function that has side effects, but write it without side effects. Now, if we go back to the code, you may think that this looks quite cumbersome and you would never write code like this. But let me change some things and we'll get back to it. So what I did here is rewrite writer into a class and add a method then to it. This then method uses the compose function we defined to compose just the current writer, so the class instance, with another function that takes the value of it with and creates another writer. So then we can write code like this. So we can get our logger out of first running square on seven maybe, and then rerun the function at one. And as you can see, this now also works. If you are familiar with JavaScript, you may recognize this syntax from working with promises. And indeed, promises are another example of an object that also creates a Kleisley category. So in similar way as that you can use the async await syntax in JavaScript to work with promises, in some programming languages, you can use syntax like that for any Kleisley uh, category object. An example of this is the language F sharp, where I created the same example and then implemented a so-called builder, which allows you to create syntax like this. So here we first run the square function and then use the F sharp equivalent of await to just get the integer value out of it. Then we can pass that to add one and just create our computation this way. So Kleisley categories are a really powerful concept that are used in many languages for async and await and asynchronous programming, but they are more, much more general than that and can be used to do, for example, logging, but really anything. This series is based on the excellent book Category Theory for Programmers by Bartosz Milowski. You can find links in the description.